We are flying from London to Edinburgh via Ryanair this morning, but it has not been an easy ride. So far, we've had to deal with a canceled train, two of them, almost getting to a car accident, and a little bit of rain. To be honest with you, the rain was actually kind of nice. Let's rewind for a second and show you what that looks like. We had planned to take one of the first two trains available, but they were both canceled on us. Fortunately, through the kindness of strangers, we were able to catch a ride to the airport. Along the way, it started to rain. When the cab was taking the exit to the airport, everybody suddenly started slamming on their brakes and we almost rear-ended somebody. Through our driver's quick reactions, we were able to stop before we hit somebody. That turns out to be a good reminder to please be safe while driving in the rain. Once we were at the airport, we still had to check in and it looked as if the London train delays were affecting everybody this morning. One thing we did have going for us is instead of using heavy suitcases, we had our really efficient backpacks. And because we had planned ahead, we were through security and into the airport in no time. Now it's just a matter of waiting for our flight. And we usually do that by going to a lounge, but today there isn't one available. So what we did instead is wander around a little bit until it was time for us to check in for our flight. And that brings us up to speed to right now. Waiting to get in line. As travel days go, this one started off a little rough. However, as experienced travelers, we know you need to prepare ahead for anything that could happen. Because as travel goes, there is always a possibility of something preventing you from having a smooth travel day. And it's not always easy to predict what those some things are. If you're interested in finding out how we handle some of our worst travel days, we'll leave a link in the description below. For now, we're just really excited to be on our way to Edinburgh. We got an early morning flight to Edinburgh so that we can have time to spend walking around and exploring this beautiful city. We're really glad we did because this city is pretty amazing. For starters, this beautiful city does a great job combining old and new. You've got these amazing old style buildings right next to brand new ones. The first thing we want to try and do is get to the castle right in the middle of town. The problem is this is one of those places you really need to book reservations about three months in advance. And we didn't so we are wondering if we're going to be able to get in today. We're going to go check and see. You can see the castle right there behind us. There it is. The, the location that we are right now is quite amazing. We don't even know where to begin. We're like confused about where to start. There are so many amazing things to see here. I think what we should do is go up the street because the castle will be around the corner. Or we could just walk up the steps which are right next to us. I think we should do that. Go up the steps it is. Granny's Green Steps. Almost to the top, but definitely worth the view. Still some more steps to go. Whoa. I think we're going in the right direction. Once you get to the top of the hill, if you turn right, it'll take you to the Royal Mile. We'll show you that in just a moment. But first, what we heard is accurate and we are not able to get in today. Tickets are sold out, but now you have the code you need to be able to get them yourself and prepare in advance. At least you get that view right there for you. Right next to where the exit is, there's a little area you can come and get your photographs. Use that QR code to make your reservations in advance because this is a very crowded location more crowded than what we're expecting because we didn't see a whole lot of tourists in town but then again what do we know what we're looking for now let's take you for a walk down the royal mile i think there's good reasons for there to be so many tourists here another really touristy experience is the scotch whiskey experience i mean you are in scotland after all the royal mile continues this way we came up the stairs on the right but there are streets that come up this direction all over the city so basically all roads lead to the castle Check out this owl. We didn't expect there to be bagpipes playing all over the place, but there they were. Another thing that's really great about this area is how much history there is. Plus, a lot of these buildings have little side streets or side alleys like this one here that takes you out to other parts of the city really quickly. We went back to the main street because there's so much more to see from this point. Like, for example, Victoria Street, which we're going to take a walk down next because this seems to be another one of those tourist destinations that everybody really wants to see. I love how they have like a walkway up there, a sidewalk down here. But these buildings are beautiful. 
if this street looks familiar, it might be because it reminds you of a particular street that was featured in Harry Potter. It's believed that this is one of the streets that influenced the writer J.K. Rowling in her famous children's novels. And that'll take us down to where the steps were that we took up to get to the castle. That's right, we're back here. We had to walk all the way down here just so we could see one more thing before we got out of this area and headed to see the rest of the city. And that'll be this kilt maker. Personally, I think this is one of the best stops we made while we are in Edinburgh. Who doesn't want to go and check out some of the amazing kilts and tartans they have available? That's a great place to turn around and head back in the opposite direction because there's still a lot more to see. Essentially, we looked up a couple of things. One of those is a cow gate, which looks interesting. I know that doesn't sound interesting at first, but I think it will be. We'll see. Calgate is an historic street as well as a bridge and we're going in this direction to find it. You can actually see the history and the architecture as we're walking in this direction. It's a really big bridge. As we were walking by the Cowgate Hostel, we couldn't help but appreciate these really beautiful doors. And it wasn't much further before we actually got to Cowgate, but what we're going to do now is turn left and head up towards where the castle is. We wanted to do that for two reasons. The first one is because there's more sights up here, and the second is because we're both really hungry. It's time to get some food. We stopped by the Tron, Cindy took my peas, but she got herself a burger, fries, or burger, chips, and slaw. slaw and I got fish and chips and we cut it in half so we can share. That was a good way to have a lunch. Now we're going to continue exploring the city. So do you recognize this street? We made it back and now we're going to go down this way just a little bit. Another thing we wanted to check out was the John Knox house. It should be right up here on the left. We don't know why it's popular but apparently it is so we're going to just real quick walk by it. But we got to get through traffic first. And by traffic, I mean the pedestrians. There's a lot of tourists here. Right there is the John Knox house. As Americans, we might not know the full history of John Knox, but we do know that he is very important to Scottish history, and we'd love to hear more about it in the comments below. It looks like it's a very popular place to go and listen to some Scottish storytelling. So what we're going to do is head back up the hill just a little bit, and then we're going to start heading to the right. This is where we're going to be turning right, down that street right there. Still part of a really large touristy area. There are a couple of things to see in this part of the city. I'm not really sure what that is, but that's one of them. And the other one is that beautiful building. Look at that architecture. Of course, there are so many other things worth seeing over here too. We weren't sure if that was a street band or free concert, but we wanted to go and check out the Princess Street Gardens anyway. So since that was in that direction, we were hitting two birds with one stone. And to be honest with you, the band was pretty good. After a little bit of music, we wanted to keep exploring this part of the city, so we checked out the Scott Monument, as well as some really great views of the castle that we were showing you earlier, and some of the rest of the city too. As it turns out, you can really see that castle from just about anywhere in the city. But who's complaining? It's a pretty good view. We're going to keep walking around and exploring. There is really way too much to show in just one video, so I think we're going to have to make another one and if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching we appreciate each and every one of you and stay tuned as we continue to travel around the world taking you along with us if you like this video make sure you hit that like button and if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so that you can continue to follow along with us as we continue on this adventure
And as always, squeeze the day and be well.